Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to do an introductory video on how to use HSM Express. It's free cam and very good cam for SOLIDWORKS. If you want to watch the actual cam programming and the tutorial, jump forward to the time in the video description because what I want to do first is talk a little bit about cam and, and, and how it relates to my story and progress and some thoughts on that. So, for those of you who have watched since like 2007, I started with no experience machining period and CAM was very intimidating and folks said, you know, you need to evaluate your choices and I had this analogy of like, well, how that's like asking someone who's never operated a vehicle to choose, you know, what NASCAR or Formula One they like better for steering and differential and, uh, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I did it, I made a decision that I think was defensible, which is I purchased Bobcat. Um, it was very inexpensive. I think I purchased it for a few hundred dollars and it worked great for a few years. Now, I don't uh, appreciate how Bobcat treats its customers. I don't appreciate their sales tactics. I don't think their software is that good. Um, the cam has always been buggy in my experience and the CAD is not parametric. So to me, that's a complete non-starter. But guess what? Did the trick for me. And uh, you can you know, complain all day long, but it got me to the point where, okay, I'm making parts. I now understand what's important to me in cam and uh, I'm ready to, you know, I grew up a little. So when I purchased the Tormach, it came with Sprut Cam. And I don't think Tormach was sort of as partnered with Sprut as they are now. So look, here's the deal. Sprut Cam, it's kind of, uh, it's not the, it's not a mo the most common choice. If you go work for a machine shop or an employer, small or big in, in the United States at least, not too likely that they're going to use Sprut Cam. So yes, if you are, uh, a grade school student, high school student, college student, and you're looking to apply your skills in life, you could argue that Sprut Cam is going to be too narrow of a box for you because an employer is not going to be interested in that skill set of yours, even though I would still argue that um, a lot of Cam has very similar uh, skill sets that are they're very um, exchangeable between software as I learned when I, you'll see here in a minute, when we started playing around with HSM Express. But nevertheless, learning the nuances of cams, quirky tips, tricks, you know, shortcuts, you know, how to be a power user, it's very important. So um, I won't, you know, I'm not gonna apologize for using Sprue Cam. It's great. And, uh, but at the same time, I recognize that's a, um, that's more of a weakness than it is a strength of that software. But here is the thing, you will not touch any other cam software that is as powerful as Sprut Cam for the price. You can complain about that all day long, you can argue with me all day long, I have yet to see anything that will do simultaneous three axis, three plus one, and simultaneous fourth axis for the price of Sprut Cam. The pricing is on Tormox website, I don't pay attention anymore, I think the price is different if you purchase a C, uh, PCNC from Tormox versus if, you're, if you don't, so, um, th that all that still holds true. My understanding, generally speaking, is that the big boy cam software, whether it's Gibbs Cam or Master Cam or even the HSM Works, which is the non-free version of HSM Express that's plug-in for SolidWorks, you're looking at five figures for 3D uh, or three plus one. So it is what it is. I love Sprut because it lets me do three-axis machining. I've got a cool three-axis video coming out too, by the way, soon. And it lets me do fourth axis, which as you guys saw from the muzzle brake project, it's awesome. You know, to be able to do that stuff is great. And it would be hard to jump into Sprut if I didn't use Sprut for all the other 2D stuff. So I'm happy that I liked it. It's frustrating that there isn't more uh, resources and, and learning out there, but I think my videos and some other folks as well have sort of neutralized that concern, which takes me to HSM Express. It is mind blowing to me that after all these years, there still are not good video tutorials out there. There's one company like Next Gen Cam or Next Cam that have, they, I think they're a partner, maybe they are. Um, I haven't paid attention. I think someone will comment in the description below, hopefully, but you know, I think HSM Works is part of the Autodesk family, which uh, somewhat related, they have um, a new software out there called Fusion 360, which is I think a, so, is it called software as a service or, or, or thin client software? I don't know, it's basically, more of a web-based, very powerful CAD and CAM integrated. It's probably going to be my go-to recommendation for folks that want um, inexpensive, powerful CAD-CAM combinations. Uh, but I need to do more research on that before I sort of make that formal recommendation. 
So HSM Express, I, I have no idea why they haven't spent you know the time like I'm going to take right now to put out video tutorials because that helps break down the barriers of use and makes it's it's, it's instructional and it's marketing and so forth. Here's the thing, you have to own SolidWorks, and that's not a small hurdle. Bottom line, it's about five grand, and I think it's about $1,000 a year for the maintenance, and you don't have to buy the maintenance, but after a couple of years, if anyone, if you're exchanging files with folks, you'll be behind the times, and your software will only be good for you. It won't be good for sending parts and receiving parts to others, at least as SolidWorks files. You could, you could of course, do it as I just. Uh, but if you have SolidWorks, HSM Express is free. Like no hooks, no credit card information exchange, free. And that's friggin' cool. And you're about to see it produces some pretty darn nice tool paths. Pretty incredible. So here's the way I think about it. I've got CAD, I've got the one of the best, if not the best, CAD out there. Inventor has made a really strong comeback from Autodesk lately. Pro E and some of the other ones are really not, I think, realistic normal options. SolidWorks just has huge market share. SolidWorks is a household name. It's something an employer is going to recognize. It's great software. It's a lot of money, but again, it depends on what your longevity is, whether you produce income or whether it's a hobby, how you want to exchange files with other folks. Like I've mentioned before, SolidWorks, a lot of GrabCAD files are SolidWorks. McMaster, you can download SolidWorks uh, models of a lot of McMaster parts. Incredible. Huge time saver for me. No brainer. And now with HSM Express Free, I think about it differently because for five grand, I've got combined CAD and CAM and it's integrated. Now, I have used, um, I think I used a Libre for a while, then I used Sprout, uh, SolidWorks and I've always had Sprout as a third party software. So they were never integrated. So if I updated a CAD file, I had to re-import it to the software. Sometimes you could get by with just re-importing it and it would pick up a lot of your geometry and toolpaths. But if you changed much, like adding a face or holes, it would reorder things and you'd have to start over. So I've sort of taught myself how to not have that be a problem. So what I'm about to say is that having integrated CAM isn't important because if you know what you're doing and you do your CAD correctly, it's not a problem. I also, a lot of what I do now, I don't do the CAD. I receive the CAD from customers or, or other means and I'm just doing the machining so I don't care about editing it or I can edit things in the G code and CAM by changing stock parameters and offsets and so forth. But having played around with HSM Express for a while, it's great. And it's, you know, it goes back to a fundamental lesson in life, which is option value. Even if you're better off not relying on it as a crutch, it's pretty darn nice to be in the same software and have, you know, parametric CAD that's integrated with CAM in the same software. It's just nice. So uh, it's going to be hard for anyone who's, you know, 20 years old and saved up for a Tormach, you know, are you going to be able to go buy SolidWorks? It's a decision you need to make, but uh, I can understand why it's a painful check to write, which means what do you do in the interim? Well, uh, I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but spending the money on Sprout Cam, if you're, if you're trying to just delay the decision to, to upgrade, that's tough too, because now you own Sprout Cam, which is not, you know, I think it's a few thousand dollars, and then you're gonna buy that later. Now again, Sprout Cam is phenomenal, and I love it for the um, 3D and four axis machining, but the reality is, I don't do a lot of three axis and four axis simultaneous stuff, and when I do it, it's honestly, it's it's more for fun and you know the truth is I don't make money I don't make my shop work with that software the functionality I need it looks like honestly is going to be a lot of it inclusive to HSM Express now we'll get into that because there it looks like there's some really really nice thing in the um, HSM works 3d version that will be big time savers and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to justify purchasing that so again a whole other conversation um, but it's something you guys need to make your own decision for but hopefully um, this video and, and this tutorial and other folks out there in the comments below will help at least be you, have you be able to make an informed decision about what the right path is. Is that you know CAD is not returnable, um, and there's a huge investment in learning it. Some folks have been banging on me. Why are you still using Sprout Cam, man? You're doing yourself a disservice. And look, you know, um, the luxury of owning my own company is I get to make my own decisions. And yes, I will agree. In the long run, you are doing it yourself a disservice. In other words. To, give an example, I certainly didn't wait any longer than I should have to buy SolidWorks. You know, in other words, buying it sooner probably would have done me a favor. Even though it's expensive, it's just so important to how I run profitably and efficiently. 
So I get it, I hear you folks. You know, I, I, I'm not sticking with Sprout Cam to date because Tormach sponsors it or because uh, I wanna keep the Sprout Cam folks happy. Uh, I did it because I know how to use it. I know how to use it reliably, create good tool pass. It's very powerful software and there's an investment in that. Now that's all also started to change for me as I've started to teach Jared, uh, my first employee, where, wow, you know, I'm a good computer guy. I'm pretty sharp with this kind of stuff and I have a really good ability to keep this stuff in my head also because I do it day in and day out and I've done it for years. Trying to teach Jared Sprout Cam, it's been a little bit tricky. And so part of me thinks, geez, I might just stick with HSM Express. You know, he doesn't have to import and export files. And uh, I'll be honest, a lot of the HSM Express stuff is better. It's a more native, intuitive application with some better descriptors and uh, more logical flow. So with that, I'll stop rambling. Let's go bang through a really quick part in HSM Express and we'll see what you guys think and we'll see where this takes us. Okay, so I just drew up a part here in SolidWorks quite quickly, just uh, as a, literally a sample part, thinking what are some good operations to see, you know, how can I trip myself up or figure out if this is something I want to spend more time on. Again, because it's no small hurdle to try to relearn and be efficient and capable with uh, a new CAM system. So when you install HSM Works, you get uh, so you get a CAM tab, and then you get this little CAM manager here. So I've gone ahead and gone through the operations, and look, I'll be honest, I'm really impressed. I have my little notes here on the side of things I wanted to try to cover in the video, and the only th two things I don't like that are really worth noting are, again, the cost, because I really think there'll be a, too many things where I want to do three-axis work. Um, even just the use of the 2D adaptive contouring that we, or sorry, 2D, what's it called? Yeah, adaptive clearing. You really want the 3D. It makes cam operations a lot quicker uh, that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to justify. And then the other silly thing is um, I don't think the simulation honestly looks as good as Sprout Cams. Uh, whoops, you got to select, you got to simulate from the job, I think. We've got everything run, I think. Yeah. So, well, actually, let's just watch that first. If you know, um, other silly thing, I got to figure out how to tell, leave the stock on. I kind of like this feature where you can show transparent stock. Um, so scroll back up here, hit play. So we're going to face off the top with the super fly. It's not, oops, sorry, hit the key, key button on my keyboard. See, it doesn't remember your stock, which I got to figure that out. <clears throat> Superfly isn't really modeled correctly, but that's okay. Let's speed it up here. And chamfering a bunch of holes, drilling a bunch of holes. Tab, oh, then the adaptive clearing, which is high-speed machining. Which, this is great. I actually, I really do like the um, the way this looks. Like It feels like it's going to be good. And a lot of the feature out, features that we're going to go, features and functionality, which I just tried to combine into one word, featurality. Um, so let's, uh, let's, well, yeah, you see that, boom, boom, boom. And look, I'm, I'm, you know, this is a introductory video where I'm just trying to learn here. So this isn't necessarily the absolute best way and final of it all. But I went to 2D milling face. We go and edit this. Um, first thing, I really like the tool library. Not gonna lie, Sprout cams can be fussy. I think this is more logical, just more powerful in how you can model the tools. Um, you can store feed rates, plunge rates. It's just you know, one other common theme that to me is important is this works like a regular Windows program where I can use tab to go through the different fields. Um, you know, I, I just, it just feels better. I, I like it. It, it doesn't mean Sprucam is broken or bad, but um, you know, I'm just gonna be honest, this is better. So. The face mill op is pretty straightforward. Um, the most, um, actually I don't think you had to do much at all. You are, let's see here, what do I need? I don't think anything at all. It kind of just does it, if I recall. So that was pretty simple. Now, um, and there's obviously, there's a lot of little things here. I'll do, as I learn the software more, uh, I want to be efficient with good videos on that. Um, so, spot, uh, so it's more to come. Spotting, again, quite simple. I'm using a 90 degree chamfer mill. I like this, again, I like the way this feature all works in the tool, the visuals, it's just, it's nice, I'm not gonna lie. 
Um, here, one of the things I liked is you could have it do, um, where was that feature? To chamfer diameter of 0.25, which I liked. Wrap it out, which I like. Lots of options there. So the other thing I've been thinking about is, is teaching this to someone else, like Jared. And I think this is actually going to be a lot easier for him to learn than Sprute Cam will, unfortunately. Uh, I thought there was a feature, there is somewhere, you can spot to a countersink depth, which is really nice because basically you can use it as a spot and it'll, it'll go just large enough that after you drill through and tap, you've got a, is it right here? I'll have to figure that out, sorry. Um, but what I do like is you can see this blue ring right here, which for us is actually on the part work uh, face, is the max diameter of the, uh, make sure I'm not full of it here. I'm pretty sure that that's the max diameter of the um, countersink. Yeah, it is, because it's a, um, so what, if you simulate that, Here we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, so sorry. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you if you had, well, let's just do it. If you had a half inch spot drill, that blue ring is going to move up and be bigger, which, can, which will show you there's more spotting you could do. You could spot deeper. You've got, you've got the capacity to do it. So let's just change it to a 0.5 inch. Let's see if I don't, hopefully I don't screw anything up here when I do that. Yeah, exactly. So, well, the blue ring shows you the spot. It shouldn't go that deep though. Hope not. Mm -hmm. It's already valid, that's fine. Simulate, see what this looks like. I keep doing that. That's play, not to, uh, Oh, I'll have to fix that. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's a good call. I did something uh, to chamfer diameter. There we go, sorry, that uh, must have auto-updated because of that. That's what I was trying to show you folks. It's kind of nice, it shows you that the max diameter of the tool is gonna be up here uh, as it chamfers down to that hole. Just, just a nice feature. Drilling, quite simple. We're using a number four drill, which is 201. And again, I like this again for, for Jared or anyone else, clearance height, retract height, and then what's it um, feeding, f uh, feed height top and then the bottom of the hole, um, drill tip through bottom. Sprute will do that as well, but it's nice to know that this will clarify and specify that you're gonna drill all the way through so you're not left with a partial hole uh, or blind hole when you don't want one. Um, so shell pocket, this, or I call it shell pocket, this was 2D adaptive clearing. This is pretty darn cool, folks. I really like this, and this will cover a lot of what you're doing. There are a couple of tricks I've already learned here. I'm using a 5 16 uh, Lakeshore Carbide end mill. All that I did for this one was selected the two edges here, and we've got machine cavities checked by default, but that's going to be something important that we come back to and you can select, here the bottom is contour, you could select the face, anything like that works. Like it is very easy to go through this. It's, it's enjoyable, it's, it's very pleasant. And we are leaving 20 thou top and bottom. We can easily get rid of that. Um, we, it automatically does a plunge in. You set your depths right here. It, like it's just very easy. You click check and it just runs automatically. And if you look, it's actually, I think, quite a nice toolpath. We already looked at it, but um, Yeah, I'm excited to put it to work and see how it actually does, but really nice. So keep going here. Um, I originally had thought 2D contouring this, but it ends up that that's not what we're going to do. So we're actually going to suppress that. I also wanted to tap these holes, so I had chosen thread, but it appears that that's actually thread milling. So to tap, you go into drilling, drill, and you actually choose in the tool library, a tap, and I think that's what changes it, if I recall. Let's see if I'm correct on that. Um, 
yeah, under cycle you do tapping, you can do a dwell, so it should work fine with the tension compression head on the Tormach. Um, so generate tool path, we'll take a look at what exactly we had selected here. 400, oh, I do need to make sure I figure out the feed rate on this because I need it to be 20 inches a minute on the Z feed. But you'd select the one face and say, select same diameter as it picks all four. And you can choose, again, your depth of the model. I'm only going 0.25 from the top of the model. You could say, you know, from the model bottom, I want to go positive point you know, 0.01, and that's going to put you there. Like, it's very intuitive like that. And dwell like so. Profiling, that is a 2D adaptive. So let's actually now take a talk about some of the tricks on that. So when we profile, let's actually just create a new version of this to start from scratch. So it's going to pick up the tool, last tool we used, the number 31, which is nice. And all we need to do here is say we want to profile and we can select this bottom contour because we have propagate along the Z, it's going to select the full part. And I believe all we need to do is uncheck machine cavities. If you read the descriptor, it's basically machine on the outside, as you can see here. I can't move my mouse over, to our, sorry, but you see the picture on the right shows it's machining on the outside of the path that we choose versus the inside. So uncheck that. And we shouldn't have to change anything else. Actually, I don't want to leave any stock. Um, I heard I didn't check it there. And let's see if that just gets us what we want. Boom, perfect. It's going to come around and machine the outside of the part. That's what's, uh, what's to argue about that. Now, the edge slot, certainly not hard, but it wasn't intuitive to me. I had to go sort of figure out how to do it. So let's... Um, Let's redo that edge slot. 2D milling, 2D adaptive, same tool is fine. All you have to do is you're sort of tricking it. So we're going to turn off machine cavities because we're going to be, uh, well, you turn off machine cavities. So what you want to do is you want to tell it the model is the outside two faces. So it's going to machine everything in between this gap here. We'll show, I'll show you another example in a second that'll help clarify it. But then what you do under stock contours is you choose that contour and we've got that unchecked and I don't think, um, let's see your bottom position, let's uncheck that. Do I have the bottom selected? Let's see here, there we go, sorry. It's picking up from the contour, so it should be okay. Yep. Um, that was all you had to do. So just simulate that. Transparent stock. So it's again a defaulting to a quote unquote high speed machining type toolpath. Like so. Pretty cool, huh? Now, same thing. This is a, or a similar example, rather. We can do the same uh, work here either with, a, with the hole or without. So the first way is ignoring the fact that you have a hole here. I didn't actually drill this in this uh, model, but very easy to do. So let's assume you had already drilled that hole out. That would be the no hole method. So let me recreate that here. 2D adaptive. And then what you're gonna do is, again, the model is gonna be this face and that face. So it's gonna look at the stuff in between here, but you gotta tell it that exists. So if we select, actually we can just cho choose the faces. I don't think it matters. Try that. See if I'm right. Ooh, I think I remembered what I did. Um, edit, I didn't uncheck machine cavities. Sorry. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Just like that. Perfect. So, the w other way, if you wanted to ignore the fact that there's a hole here and basically along this plane go through and machine everything, what you would do is leave the model the same delete these stock contours and instead choose this circle. So that's going to look at everything inside this circle along this plane and machine everything so we should get a cool toolpath inside here. Yeah, look at that. It's kind of cool, right? And we'll simulate that. Boom, boom. Show stock. Transparent. Boom, boom, boom. Just like so, right? Pretty cool. So that's a really quick intro. I am, have to say I really am impressed. 
Um, I want to start writing some code on the Tormach and make sure I'm happy with how it posts and with Pathpilot and you know give it give it a little bit more than just a software overlook. But look, you know, Cam isn't that crazy. I mean, a lot of these things are similar to what we saw in Spruit Cam. So at this level, it's pretty quick to to learn a new system. But there's a lot of little tips and tricks like you wouldn't have figured out. I think unless you've gone and researched it, how you end up choosing the model and stock contours. I have my notes here about what else I really liked. We talked about most of it. The tool library is obviously a big thing and programming. I think programming tools itself, if we go back and look at the tool library, being able to change custom tools and choose different uh, form mills and, and standardized tool holders, I think is a more powerful method. So yeah, so that's most of the overview. The, um, the one thing I did want to mention though is again, a part like this, you can't do one operation that's going to machine on multiple Z planes and make basically make this part. But I was watching some demos online where if you have the HSM works, the pay version, it's more powerful with three axis. You can sort of choose a 3D adaptive clearing. And basically it's kind of like the video I just did, Sprut Cam G code in 30 seconds where you sort of have uh, roughing uh, waterline operations that are pre-set up to just basically look at the solid model and calculate the whole toolpath. This has a look like a very strong version of something similar with 3D adaptive clearing, where it will take that and handle all of these different shapes, contours, and depths in one click. So that's something I have to look into because that's pretty darn powerful for timing of creating, uh, creating cam and G-code and so forth. Anyways. I'm looking forward to learning the software even better. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please do me a favor, let me know what you guys want to see or tips and experiences you've got in the comments below. And if you do like it, I appreciate the thumbs up, sharing in the comments. Otherwise, take care. I will see you soon, folks.